Mercy the Mad here with a video about Vlad von Karstein's ultimate power campaign. The goal of this campaign is for Vlad to vassalize Reichland and rule over the empire as the true emperor and rightful elect account of Stirland. Vassalize and eventually confederate the 200% endgame armies of Kemla and the Red Duke and use the combined might of the vampire nations to conquer every old world faction that could possibly threaten the empire, ushering in a new era of unprecedented peace for Vlad's mortal subjects. When the endgame event happens, it's not just Kemla and the Red Duke that spawn powerful endgame armies, the other vampire factions will also be boosted in power, and it'll be up to the new emperor, Vlad von Karstein, to fight the vampire wars, to vassalize or destroy all the other vampire lords so they can't threaten Vlad's new empire. The plan is to use every tool at Vlad's disposal to do this, including intentionally losing a battle versus Zelig van Kruger, that's the temple of faction leader. That'll give him Vlad's trait so that he'll come back to life every turn so he can farm him for blood kisses. We'll also use the Vassal exploit to create endless money, experience, and magic items by farming Tempelhof's last city and forcing them to become vassals over and over. This can be exploited because if you cancel the Vassal Treaty in the Diplomacy window and then declare war via Diplomacy, it will instantly spawn a new army. Then you can conquer the last settlement, force vassalage again, and then repeat that process endlessly. You must cancel the Vassal Treaty in the Diplomacy screen and then declare war again, otherwise it won't work. If you just attack the Vassal without breaking your vassal treaty first, that will permanently break the exploit. Vlad and his vampires will be leveled up by turn 5 using the vassal exploit, unlocking powerful magic, and leveling 4 vampire lords with the Necrarch growth skill for 36 times 4 or plus 144 growth per turn in Sylvania. So we'll be able to build up our settlements to rank 5 really quickly. We will intentionally break the vassal exploit after a few turns, as doing this exploit becomes very unfun and grindy after a while. Regarding vampire confederations, Kimla can usually be confederated if you're playing as Vlad or Isabella, but the Red Duke often dies before you can get to him. In this campaign, we'll use the Vampire Endgame scenario to bring the Red Duke back to life and give a second chance to confederate him when the Endgame scenario hits. I'll set the Vampire Endgame for 200% strength and have it occur around turn 40 to give time to get into position. We can reduce Kemla and the Red Duke to a single settlement each and station an elite army with lightning strike next to each capital. Then, as soon as the Endgame happens and the faction armies spawn, we can force them into vassalage by taking their last settlement. Then we should have at least 10 turns to get them back to positive relations and work on weakening their armies so that we can confederate them when we're ready. The endgame factions will have a number of armies with the free upkeep trait, which we can inherit if we can confederate the faction, giving Vlad ultimate power. The ultimate goal is to have a bunch of armies that we don't have to pay upkeep for at all, and we can then fill those armies with high level elite units. Before I start a big campaign like this, I like to have a strong theme, goals, and a sort of storyline planned out, as well as at least a vague plan about how to go about it. I find that makes it really more immersive for me and gets me more invested in the campaign before I start. In this campaign, we're going to have Vlad as the rightful emperor. It's probably way more efficient to just conquer the empire, but I've always loved the idea of Vlad ruling over his terrified human populace, but actually being a great ruler and reclaiming his ancestral rights as the true elector of Stirland. Also, vassalizing and then trying to defend Reichland's human faction makes the campaign much more challenging. And using the vassal cheese counters that extra difficulty because the the Vassal Cheese is extremely powerful, but it does destroy your reliability. Everyone will distrust Vlad, but making diplomacy that much harder feels appropriate for an evil vampire emperor. Having negative infinity trustworthiness is not actually as bad as it seems. It doesn't actually factor into every deal evaluation, and some factions are not affected by it as much. It does not affect confederation calculations at all, for example. And Vlad can just ignore diplomacy entirely to force vassalize vampire factions by taking their last settlement anyway. The real downside to the Vassal X is just that it's extremely grindy and becomes very tedious. And that's the real danger as it can kill the enjoyment of your campaign. For this reason, I'll intentionally break the exploit after a few turns to avoid the temptation to just keep using it. I'm excited for this campaign as it should have a really strong, powerful and thematic feeling early game, but then also transition into allowing a really different and powerful late game strategy via the vampire vassals and potentially free armies. I'll be live streaming this entire campaign, but I'll also do a short follow our video afterwards to explain some additional strategies and exploits that I'll be using and report back on how the campaign goes and if I manage to achieve all my objectives. If you're interested in some more on cast exploits, I'll link a video at the end.